Hello, welcome to the IIA's quick overview of Domain 5, Performing Internal Audit Services. I'm David Petrisky. I'm the Director of Professional Standards at the IIA. Now, the purpose of this video is to give you a brief overview of the proposed in global internal audit standards, specifically to dive a little deeper into the section on performing internal audit services. Now, a view, uh, as you see on this slide, of the proposed global internal audit standards shows that it consists of five domains uh, and 15 principles. And the fifth domain, performing internal audit services, includes the principles, standards, and recommended guidance related to planning, conducting, and reporting on internal audit projects, or otherwise known as engagements. In domain five, the standards and the related recommendations for implementation are applicable to both assurance and advisory services, unless otherwise noted. Now, the reason for this was to present a generalized approach to project management that identifies the fundamental elements of planning, performing, and communicating about internal audit services. The principles in Domain 5 cover engagement planning, fieldwork, the development and reporting of findings, and following up on management's corrective action plans. Now let's dive a little deeper into the contents and noteworthy changes in this domain. Standard 13.1 engagement communication makes explicit the types of communication required, initial, ongoing, closing, and final. Now, there are many familiar names for these communications uh, from opening to kickoff meetings, uh, to status updates and exit conferences. So these terms uh, you know, are fairly uh, familiar to you know, auditors everywhere. Standard 13.2 describes the engagement risk assessment, which leads to the refinement of the engagement objectives and scope, which are described in standard 13.3. Standard 13.4 evaluation criteria states that internal auditors must use management's criteria if deemed adequate, or if not to identify and apply reasonable criteria. Now, standards 13.2 and 13.4 include examples of elevating requirements from existing implementation standards for assurance to apply to all engagements. So think of the dot A standards in the uh, current uh, standards. Uh, they're now applying to both assurance and advisory. Now, in standard 13.5, engagement resources, it states that internal auditors must determine the resources needed for engagements and discuss any concerns they may have with the CAE. The standards in Principle 13 culminate in the Engagement Work Program, 13.6, which reflects the results of the planning and guides the fieldwork. Standard 14.1 uh, describes steps for obtaining and analyzing data in comparison to the evaluation criteria, while Standard 14.2 contains requirements for determining potential engagement findings. Findings is a new term for the standards, and it is defined as a gap between the condition and criteria. Standard 14.3 requires an identification of root causes uh, and potential effects uh, to assess the significance of findings with a rating, ranking, or other indication for the benefit of the audit stakeholders. Standard 14.4 requires internal auditors to make recommendations to address the root causes of findings. It also requires auditors to obtain management's action plans to address findings. Developing engagement conclusions, standard 14.5, is similar to standard 14.3 as it requires an overall conclusion on the engagement's findings relative to the objectives, with a rating or ranking based on the aggregated significance of the findings. Standard 14.6, documenting engagements, establishes requirements for documenting the support for conclusions. And there are public sector considerations in standards 14.4 and 14.6, that describe common statutory requirements regarding final communications and access to work papers. In principle uh, 15, we find standard 15.1, final engagement communication, which requires including the engagement objectives, scope, conclusions, recommendations, action plans, and either a statement that the engagement was conducted in conformance with the global internal audit standards or an explanation of why not. Standard 15.2, confirming the implementation of action plans, describes how the internal audit function confirms that management has implemented action plans. 
Standard 15.2 also contains a public sector consideration about implementation status of recommendations and action plans. Well, thank you for watching this brief overview of Domain 5, Performing Internal Audit Services, which is a critical piece of the proposed global internal audit standards.